Good afternoon, everyone. I hope this will be a sweet talk to Kitty because we say eat sweet, talk sweet. So we're going to talk about honey, which is a sweet medicine. So honey is a sweet medicine. That before we start with the honey, let's talk about the honeybees, which brings to honey to us. Honeybees are the most important on earth for a sustainable human life. I'll repeat it. Honeybees are the most important organisms on earth for a sustainable human life. Why? Because honeybees are out there preparing the earth for our life for 103 million years. And without the honeybees, our life will be miserable in less than four years. About 75% of the food that you eat every day, including the fruits, cereals, anything else, you will be losing them. If you don't have the honeybees, the coffee that you drink and the tea that you drink, you may not have them. And more than that, the dress that you have made out of cotton also pollinated by the honeybees. That's why honeybees are the most important organisms on earth for a sustainable human life. And another thing, honeybees are the only insects that give us food. Think about any other food that can come from the insects, none other. Honey is the only food that comes or bestowed from the insect to us. So honey is used as a medicine, more than a food, by thousands of years, by every single civilization on Earth. Think about the Egyptians, Sumerians, Hittites, Aztecs and Mayas, Chinese and Indian medicine, Turks, Arabs, Persians, they all used honey for medicinal purposes. Even Hippocrates and Galen and Avicenna, which are the top people for medicine and pharmacy, they used honey numerous times in their prescriptions, primarily for wound healing. Honey is the ultimate wound healing agent, again, for thousands of years, used by every civilization on Earth. And what is honey made of? How many of you think honey is just sugar? Please raise your hand. That's good, I'm in the right place. So no, no, but nobody thinks it is just sugar. Yes, honey is mostly sugar, 84% of the honey is sugar, primarily glucose and fructose, some sucrose, some maltose, and up to 13 different sugars. But honey is a living food. It has enzymes in it. It has at least four different active enzymes inside the honey, which are glucose oxidase, diastase, catalase, and the other A's. Okay, so honey is mixed of those enzymes are very critical for honey's medicinal value. So probably you remember from your biology class, enzymes are made of what? Proteins. And proteins are vulnerable to heating. So that's why you should not put honey into a very hot coffee, very hot tea, very hot milk or very hot water. Again, the reason is enzymes are proteins and proteins get denatured at high temperatures. But I love putting honey in my coffee. I cannot drink my tea without honey. What am I gonna do? There's a solution. If the honey doesn't, sorry, if the drink doesn't burn your mouth, it will not burn the honey. So if it's a drinkable temperature, you can add honey and consume it. By this way, you let the enzymes be still alive, and then they do their functions when you consume the honey. So what about honey, like biological activity? So we know that not every honey is created equal. If I ask you, is the color of honey golden yellow? Please raise your hand if you agree with this. Okay. Unfortunately, you are wrong. There is no golden yellow color in honey coloring. So honey can color from all the way from water white, which looks like water, 
all the way to dark amber, which looks like almost black. So you can have different shades of extra white, water white, white, light amber, extra amber, amber, and dark amber. These are seven different colors of the honey. And all these different colors are originated from the phytochemicals inside the honey. As you know, honeybees go and collect nectars from the bees. Is that right? And this is mostly happening in spring. Right now, go outside and check the trees or check the flowers. You will see some honeybees landing on them. They collect nectar for their carbohydrate source, for their sugar source. They collect pollen for their protein and lipid source. They also collect water and they also collect resin to make propolis. So all these things are needed for the honeybees. Meanwhile, most of those plants, when they are attracting the bees with their nectar, they also add some small minute chemicals, which are called phytochemicals, like chemicals coming from the plants. This can be phenolic acids, flavonoids, tannins or terponates, but all these are accumulating in the nectar for the honeybee to collect it and convert it into honey. So, and these are like small chemicals that are needed for the honeybee's health and as well as for human health. So when we collect the honey or harvest the honey from the bees and consume it, we are also consuming those small chemicals for our own health benefit. Again, these are called phytochemicals. So how many of you think, or do you think, please raise your hand if you agree with this, honey is bee vomit? Oh, okay, some people believe it's bee vomit. It sounds disgusting, but it is something like bee vomit. In scientific world, we say this regurgitation, but it is not exactly vomiting. Because in our vomits, sorry, it's disgusting, but we are mixing our uh, stomach products, our food, and then it's coming up. But in the bees, they do not mix the nectar with their intestinal products. So they have a one-way valve, so the nectar cannot pass to their intestines or stomach, so they cannot consume it. So it's a one-way that only opens. And then when they regurgitate, they are bringing out a clean nectar, which will convert it into honey. And we said honey is mostly sugar. Nectar is sucrose, which is a disaccharide. Do you remember disaccharides from the biology again? They are two sugar molecules. And then honey is mostly rich in fructose and glucose. So basically, the invertase enzyme converts this sucrose into fructose and glucose. I know it's too much science, too much biology but this is how the honey is made. So, honey is biological activity. The medicinal properties, they are coming from these phytochemicals, coming from the plants. And you cannot get the same honey from the same hive every year, which means that the honey that you get from the hive in the same location will not be the same next year, or it is very different from the last year's harvest. Why does this happen? Think about the forage, the landscape, the rain, the climate, the plants that are blooming, the timing of those, they're all changing from year to year. And honeybees are also changing their nectar source from year to year. So most of the time, we have spring honey, which is mostly lightly colored, and we have fall honey, which is mostly darkly colored. So dark colored honeys, which is like amber to dark amber, they have more medicinal value than the spring honeys, which is lighter honey. Are you with me? Okay. So what about like honey is a medicine used by every civilization on earth for thousands of years for different diseases. I will tell you some practical applications. How many of you suffer from acne? Please raise your hand. Okay. I have a very sweet solution for you. Honey. Honey is antimicrobial, antioxidant, 
and anti-inflammatory. Acne on the face is mostly caused because of infection of cutibacterium acnes, the bacteria that causes acne. It also initiates inflammation. That's why it is red and sometimes yellow on the tip because of the infection and inflammation. When you use honey on your face, the honey will start killing the cutibacterium acnes and also it will downregulate or suppress the inflammation. How do you apply this? Wash your face before you go to bed and then apply honey directly on your face and then let it spill by itself within 30 to 45 minutes. But don't let anybody to kiss you at that moment. It's very sticky, okay? So then wash it off, 30 to 45 minutes. One day, two days, three days. But remember, for acne, you try, uh, you use chemicals for days and weeks or even months. For honey, you will get result within the first week. You're gonna see that your acne is going down. Number two, how many of you like uh, experienced diarrhea or constipation in your life? Most of us, I believe. Honey can help both of them. So warm honey drink can help with constipation and cold honey drink can help with diarrhea. Don't mix them, it will get worse, okay? So cold for diarrhea, warm for uh, constipation. And honey can also fight with the bacteria that causes stomach ulcer, which is Helicobacter pylori. So honey can kill that bacteria as well. So not every honey is created equal, remember? So we have different honeys from different parts of the world which promotes or provides medicinal properties. Please raise your hand if you heard about Manuka honey. There you go, okay. Manuka honey was discovered in 1990s by Professor Peter Mullen, and then Manuka honey is being the most studied medicinal grade honey in the world. For more than 30 years, antibacterial activities of Manuka honey has been studied and promoted significantly. This honey was about $10 per pound in 1990s. And do you know the price today? It's about $1,000 per pound. You can find Manuka honey at that prices. How does this happen? Research. Are there other medicinal honeys in the world? Yes, they are. We have chestnut honey from Turkey, Tualang honey from Malaysia, Ulmo honey from Chile, or mad honey from Turkey again. But we also have oak honey from the Balkans. And most definitely from the US, we have the buckwheat honey. Have you ever tried buckwheat honey? Okay. That's good you didn't try. It doesn't taste like honey. It doesn't look like honey. And it doesn't smell like honey because it is medicine. So most of the medicinal honey is, they don't look like honey. They don't taste like honey. They don't smell like honey. They are mostly darker. They are mostly molasses kind of taste. And they mostly have some kind of smoky flavor. Okay, which honey will you use for medicinal purposes? Pretty easy. It will be local honey from local beekeepers. It will be dark honey because the darker the color of honey, the higher medicinal properties, the higher antioxidant. And it needs to be comb honey. Why it is comb honey? Have you ever tried comb honey in your life? Have you ever chewed the wax? Yes, my daughter did. So comb honey, most of us don't use it because we are kind of afraid of chewing the wax but comb honey has its own benefits in it. So when the honeybees make the honey, put them into the, uh, the comb, like into their cell, they cure the honey, they remove the, uh, humid like dehumidify them as they remove the water, and then they seal it with the wax. And after this, the honey can survive for how long? Up to 3,000 years. Honey doesn't spoil. Honey doesn't expire. So as the bees close it with the wax, it has an infinite life. Because of the high sugar content, because of the acidity, because of the phytochemicals inside the honey, and hydrogen peroxide activity, 
bacteria, fungi, viruses cannot survive inside the honey. That's why honey doesn't spoil for years and years and years. Did you know that King Tut, the Tutankhamun, one of the pharaohs of Egypt, he was mummified. When his tomb was discovered, they found honey next to him. So he lived about 3,000 years ago. And the honey next to him was still edible, which means that honey doesn't expire. Overall, I have three take-home messages for you. One, honey is medicine. Number two, not every honey is created equal. Number three, honeybees are the most important organisms on Earth for a sustainable human life. Eat sweet, talk sweet, and stay sweet. Thank you.